Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to explain to you what an API is and how we can bring that into the Power Platform either via an HTTP action in Power Automate or by building a custom connector and by doing so we can then use it repetitively across Power Automate, Power Apps and also Copilot Studio and I'll show you all three of those use cases in today's video. But the first thing I want to do really is to try and explain to you what is an API or an application programming interface. And so for that, I'm gonna jump across onto the Microsoft Store. And if I go and do a search and maybe search for a Copilot Surface, you can see that it's returning to me results, the top five results. And little do you know that actually behind the scenes, we are calling an API using the website. So in order to demonstrate this, if I click on the three dots and go to more tools and developer tools, by ensuring that I'm on the network tab, if I go and make a change here to the search and put in the word PC, we can see over on the right hand side that several times this auto suggest API has been called. And if I click on that, we can actually look at the header and we can look at this particular URL. And within that, you can see the string, the Copilot Studio PC. In fact, this one says P. If I jump onto the next one, we can say, see it says PC. So this is an, a call to an API. It's searching up products within the Microsoft Store. And if I go to the payload, again, we can see some of the data that's been sent, including the query. And if I look at the response, we can see all of the JSON data that's coming back, including the products that are being returned on that search interface. So we have the Surface Pro, Copilot Plus, and as we scroll down, We've got the next one, and within that data, there's information about a URL, an image, etc. So wouldn't it be quite interesting if we could bring that into Power Automate? So that's exactly what we're going to do by going to the header and copying this URL with Control C. So jumping across to a new flow that I've built, it's got a manual trigger. All I'm going to do is add in a single action, and at this point, it's going to be the HTTP action, and you can see here it asks for a URI, and I'll paste in that URL that I captured earlier, and I'll set the method to get. So I'll go ahead and save and test this, and when I run the flow, we can have a look at the output from that HTTP connection, and we can see exactly the same data coming back that we saw earlier when we use it to develop our tools. Now if I go back into edit, at this point in time, this particular API call is based on a fixed string, Copilot Surface PC. But of course, if I go into the trigger and go and add in an input in the form of text, we can call this our search term, and then I can dynamically supply that input parameter into our call to the API. So I'll go and replace that now by searching for more, finding our input parameter, and we can go ahead and test. So now instead of using a fixed value for the product to search for, I can for instance type in Xbox controller, and when I run this flow, we can see in the input we have that value Xbox controller as our query parameter, and if I look at the outputs, we'll see now that the products coming back in the response here are based on Xbox and the Xbox wireless controller. So what we've managed to do is take an API that's available on a website in this case, and we brought that into our Power Automate flow using the HTTP action. Now for those that are coming to terms with what an API actually is, I've got this little graphic that I put together earlier based on going to a drive through maybe your favorite Starbucks or McDonald's, etc. And so you as a user are going to request a product to the agent that sat there on the microphone, on the speaker. And so you will make a request to the API. The API is ultimately the person behind the microphone. They'll take the details of what you're looking for. And then behind the scenes, they're going to speak to the people in the kitchen who will prepare that. And that's ultimately what happens when you make a request to an API. There are certain things that you have to provide. That's your request. Those are in the form of parameters. And then under the bonnet, there's something, a system going away, grabbing that data, processing your request. And then just like you would at the drive-through, your final response is the product that you've ordered. So your cappuccino or your burger, and that is the API response. And so when you're working with the Power Platform, you'll find that you need to understand this principle when working with connectors because they have actions, 
Underneath those actions, you've got APIs. And then if you're working with a custom API, like the one I highlighted on the Microsoft Store, you can then build a custom connector and use the action for that custom API. So that's exactly what we're gonna do next. We're gonna look at the movie database. And the movie database has got an API. So if I go to more and go to API, we have the ability to set up a developer instance. And so by clicking on this, I have to accept their terms and conditions. But what I'd like to demonstrate is how you can start searching for movies, authenticate with their API, and bring that data into Power Automate, into Power Apps, and indeed into Copilot Studio using a custom connector. So if you go ahead and complete the required information, you can submit that. And in return, you'll see that you get an API key and that's how you authenticate with the API so that they know who it is that's making the requests. Now, the Microsoft Store didn't have any authentication. This particular one does. And of course, we're going to cover that in the next part of my demonstration. So if we jump into the documents and then over across into the search and query for details, you can see that the documents give us an example API to call. And we have that URL including the API key and it's searching for a movie called Jack Reacher. Now, the response is this sample data that we see just below. So if I copy this URL in full, with a control C, paste that into a brand new browser tab, you can see we've got a response back and that includes a couple of movies. If I go and edit the query, so rather than Jack Reacher, if I go and search for Frozen, my favorite movie of all times, you can see we've now got details about Disney's Frozen as well as other movies that contain Frozen in the title. So if we jump back across into Power Automate, over into Edit, and if we replace the URL that we're calling from the Microsoft Store, we can then do as we did before, replace the fixed start search string with the dynamic search term here, and we can go ahead and test. And just like before, if I put in my favorite movie, in this case, Spider-Man, and run the flow and hit done, if I go to the raw outputs, we can see that we have details about the Spider-Man movie, including an overview, and also some links to different images based on either the poster or the backdrop. Now, referring back to the documentation for the API, we can see there's a section on images. If I go to basics, it says that in order to get the images, we append this URL. So if I was to copy that and paste that into my browser window right now, I could then take one of the image paths. In this case, I'll go for the frozen poster path so just copy this string here, control C and paste that in. If I hit enter, we'll now see that I've got the frozen image for that particular movie. So let's see if we can take what we've learned here and build a custom connector. So if I go back to make.powerautomate.com, you'll see there's a section here called custom connectors. I can click on new custom connector and create from blank. And we'll call this the movie DB connector and go to continue. You can see we can upload an image and previously I've downloaded the movie DB image and then we need to set the host. So based on what I copied earlier, if I use my Windows V, I can refer back to some of the data that I've captured and I can paste in the full URL. Now, unfortunately it doesn't need the full URL. All it needs is api.moviesdb.org. But if I delete the HTTPS colon slash slash, delete everything after that, you can see everything is now in place and ready to move on to the next stage, which is security. So moving on to security, this is how we authenticate with the API. So the Microsoft Store had no authentication. This particular API uses an API key. You've got other options for basic authentication where you have a username and password and you have OAuth2, which is what we use when we use the Graph API, for instance, and you have an app registration. But this particular one is based on an API key. I know that it's called API underscore key, and I can do that with a parameter name as well. And then the location of this API key is actually in the query string. And so what that means is we pass it alongside the URL. It's not something we pass 
in the data that goes to the API via the header, i.e. it's not part of the request header. So I'll change that to query and we'll move on to the definition. So the definition is about creating all those different actions. And if you think about the Teams connector, we're creating a custom connector for the movie database API. The Teams connector has got multiple actions, whether that's listing your channels or posting a message or creating a team. So I'm gonna create an action for MovieDB to search for a movie. And we can go ahead and we can copy that and paste that into the operation ID too and you can give it a description, search for a movie. Now in terms of visibility, this is whether or not it appears right out of the box or if you have to search for it. By marking it important, it will be visible as soon as I search for the MovieDB connector. The next stage is the request. We're doing a get and the get is based on a URL. If I go into my Windows V again and search through some of the data I've copied previously, I can paste in that full URL, which includes the query and the API key, and I can hit import. Now what this does is it strips out all the parameters that I've passed, and it includes then as a query, the two input parameters. Now, as I've already defined the API key as part of the security, I can remove this one, but the original query is where we pass in the string for the particular movie that we're looking to search for. Finally, we've got the response. So that's the data that comes back from the API. At the moment, the custom connector knows nothing about it. So if I click on that, I can go and import from a sample. And just like we did before, if I get a JSON body, I can paste that in and create a schema, just like you would with parse JSON in Power Automate. So if I jump back across to the website where I've called that API and done my search for Frozen, if I control A and control C, I can copy that sample data, jump back across to my custom connector and paste that in and hit import. And you can see now it's identified all of the different values that are coming back in that JSON response. Now, before I go ahead and create the connector, we've got the AI plugins page. That's in preview right now, but if you were to provide details in here, it would ultimately help you when deploying this to a custom co-pilot. But for now, I'm gonna leave that blank and equally code as well. If you wanted to implement some custom C Sharp to transform some of that data that comes back from your API, again, you could write some custom code. But right now, all I'm gonna do is hit create connector. So my custom connector is now being created. If I go to the test page, we currently don't have a connection. So I need to create a new connection, which will open up a tab, and it's gonna ask me for the API key. So in order for me to use this custom connector, I must have an API key to create a connection. And the same would apply in Power Apps, in Power Automate, and in Copilot Studio. So by jumping across to my MovieDB, I can Control C on my API key. I can jump back into my connection, paste and create that connection. And then if I jump back across onto my custom connector, if we refresh and wait, my connection's been created. And now if I do a search here for my next favorite movie, which is Beauty and the Beast, and hit test, we can see we get a response back and we have details about the Beauty and the Beast movie. So now when I build a brand new flow, I can go and add an action and search for the movie connector that I've created. I might want to go and use the filter here for a custom but we can now see I have my search for a movie with that icon that I added as part of that custom connector. So search for a movie. If I click on that, I'm gonna to have to create a connection again. So I'll just call that the movie DB connector. I can paste in my API key and create a new connection. And just like before, if I go and add in a custom input for our search term, I can jump into my action here into the properties, we've got query, and I can add in the dynamic value for that search term. And so if we go ahead and save and test, our flow is gonna ask for a search term, and if I type in Finding Nemo and run the flow, we can see our query for Finding Nemo, and if we have a look at the raw output, we can see the response is for Finding Nemo. And we now have that custom connector working in our flow. If I jump across into Power Apps, I can go and create a blank canvas for our movie search app and create that. So here all I'm gonna do is go into the data and search for my movie DB connector. I'll go ahead and add that into my app. Then 
As I'm going to keep this demo quite simple, I'm going to add in a text input that will enable me to search for a particular movie. I'm going to add in a button so I can click and then search using that connector that I've created. And then I'll go and add in a gallery and that gallery can display our results. I'll just resize and, and position that gallery. So if I go back to the tree view onto the button, what I want the button to do when it's selected is I want it to run that search for a movie via that connector. And of course, if I use the open bracket, you'll see that it's auto-completing already, seeing it needs to pass in a value for the query in the form of text. And I can use my text input one dot text and pass that into my search query. So that's going to bring back a record which will include a value called results and that results is a table of results. So I'm going to set dot results which will bring back a table. Now at the moment this isn't being saved as a variable but what I'd like to do is use a collection so I'm going to use clear collect with an opening bracket and we'll call that col movies for the collection name and then if I jump right to the very end with a closing bracket, we now have a collection of movies. And so if I put this into play mode and I type in Titanic and hit the button, our query behind the scenes will have hopefully picked up all the movies regarding Titanic. And if I click on that button, double click on the collection name and expand the table, we can see we have in fact brought back some details about different films with Titanic in the name. So over onto our gallery, I want to connect that to our collection. If I click on the pen, I can then go and change the layout and we'll change the layout so it's got a title, a subtitle, and an overlay in this case. If I pick the title rather than using the backdrop path, if I use the title of the movie, Titanic, and then for the text below the subtitle, I can use the overview. And then when it comes to the image, if I use this item, dot and then the backdrop path you'll recall that i also need to append the url so using windows v once more if i jump into my clipboard history i can get the url that i need to append i'll put that into quotes like so and then insert an ampersand and we can now see the images coming through for those different films so if i put that into play mode search for Finding Nemo again and hit the button. We've got images coming through for the different Nemo films. If I search for Beauty and the Beast and do a search, we've got the Beauty and the Beast images. And if I was to search for Superman, lo and behold, we have the Superman images coming through. And we're now using our custom connector via the API to get this data back into our app. So finally, I'm across on Copilot Studio. I'm going to create a brand new Copilot. I'm going to turn off the AI knowledge, which means it won't be able to use the internet to find details about my movies. And then I'm going to jump across over onto Actions and add in an action. And I'm going to use the search for a movie, which should hopefully find my custom connector, search for a movie, there we go. I can click on that and add that into my Copilot in Copilot Studio. So for the purpose of using this for generative actions, which is still currently in preview, I'd want to improve upon the display name. So I'll call it search for a movie. And then in the description, search for a movie using the movie name provided by the user and return details about the available matching movies and I'll hit next. Now I've noticed that the input which is based on the query string is currently hidden and I believe that's because I've not made that input parameter a required field so if I go into edit inputs I can actually add it and you'll see that my query string is available here and again I can put in a description so the movie name and we'll save that, moving on to next, and then finish. We now have that action available to us in our Copilot. Now, you'll see that there's something on the top here saying enabling your Copilot to respond with the best combination of actions and topics using generative AI in preview. 
if I jump across into that, go to settings here, you'll see in classic mode, it uses something called generative answers, which means it can respond based on the knowledge. If I turn on generative preview, it means it can also use the actions, the topics, and the knowledge. However, as this is, as this is experimental, I'm going to show you how we can use this connector in a topic. So if we jump back across onto topics, I'm going to add a topic from blank, and we'll use this to use the action to search for a movie. So the phrases are gonna be based on search for a movie. And of course you can improve upon this. I'm then going to ask a question. What movie would you like details of? I'm gonna change the type to user's entire response. And we'll change the variable name to movie name. I'm then going to add in a node for our action. So we'll call an action. I can actually select it from plugin in this case and search for a movie. And then we'll note that whilst it hasn't asked for the inputs, I know there should be a query. So I'll choose that query string here and then I can supply my topic. So in this case, topic dot movie name variable, insert that and the response here is page number results, total pages and total results. And of course, I'm more curious about the results that's been store, stored in the results table. So then in terms of response to the end user, I want to send a message. And I think it would be useful for me just to provide the top movie that I get back for this demonstration. So I'll put in a placeholder for the movie title. I'll put in a placeholder for the movie summary, like so. And then using FX, I can then get my topic.results, of which there'll be many. Um, I can then use first, which of course get me my first result. And then using the dot notation, I can get back the title. So very much like the code that you write in your Power App. I'm going to highlight that Control C and insert it. And that will enable me then to do exactly the same thing for the summary. I can control V to paste it in, type in the overview as it's called and insert that. And then finally, I wouldn't mind also adding in an image and that image can be based on a URL. And if we use the power FX again, go into formula, I can paste in that expression. I can do the dot notation and get the path for the backdrop. Maybe in fact, I can get the path for the poster. And then I need to append that onto the URL. So again, if I use Windows V from earlier, if I get that prefix, put quotes around it, and then insert an ampersand. If I insert that, we should hopefully get an image URL based on the poster path. So if I give this a name, find me a movie, and save it, I can ask my bot to search for a movie. It's gonna ask me what movie would I like details of, and if I go with Finding Nemo again, we're getting a connection error. I'll work through this connection error here can see that it's not connected, but we've got a green tick. If I hit submit, everything is looking good. If I jump back across onto my bot and retry that question, we can see we've now got the details about the Finding Nemo, the summary, and the image. And again, if I search for a movie and I ask for Transformers, we now get details about Transformers using that API that's on the movie database using the custom connector that we've built on the Power Platform. So there we go. I hope that everyone has taken away what an API is and also how you can use the HTTP action to achieve a very basic integration with an API, but then how you can take that further, make it a repeatable concept, build a custom connector, and then ultimately be able to use that API across multiple apps, flows, copilots, using that concept of a custom connector.